I'm going to show how to install the Starlink kit from beginning to end, including how I ran the cable from my office to the outside Starlink. This kit was mailed directly to my door. Here are the contents of the box. The Starlink, base, 75 foot Starlink cable, router, and 6 foot power cord. There's also a simple diagram showing the basic setup. Start by downloading the Starlink app. Then find the best location outside for your Starlink by clicking on Startup and then Obstructions. Choose which Starlink you have and then hit Confirm. Then go outside to find an open area and click I'm ready. With your camera, start scanning the sky. Make sure to be very thorough and get all areas. Do this until you see the words View Results on your phone. After waiting for results, it will prompt you to either find a better spot or will tell you it's a good location for placement. Since I like the idea of portability and easy access, I'm placing mine on the ground in its base. However, if a wall mount is desired, Mounts can be purchased online at shop.starlink.com. Now that I found the perfect location, I had to plan the route that the cable was going to make from the Starlink to my office inside. I decided I would bury it in conduit and run it up behind my downspout through the soffit into the attic. From the attic, I would run it down and out of my office wall. After measuring the route, I figured the 75 foot of Starlink cable would work. I also needed to make sure I could tunnel under my walkway. To do this, I dug down past the concrete base and a little beyond into the gravel on each side. Using a metal rod and a mallet, I bored a tunnel through the base gravel beneath the concrete. I removed the rod, then I took a scrap 1 inch Schedule 40 conduit and duct taped the end. Placing the taped end into the hole, the conduit was easily driven through using the mallet. Next, I planned the cable route to the soffit. I drilled a small hole where I wanted the cable to come out. This will be drilled to a larger size later. I first had to make sure there weren't any obstacles when snaking the cable through the attic. Snaking can be done with a fish tape, or in this case, fish rods. These fish rods glow in the dark, which is perfect for finding them when in the attic. Making sure I had the correct end, I sent the fish rod through the hole in the soffit. Then I went searching for it in the attic. Once found, I tied on some heavy duty twine that will serve as my pole line. The spool was placed on a rod so it would easily unreal. Next, the rod was pulled from the attic, bringing with it the end of the pole line. Making sure there was plenty of line left out, I untied it from the rod. Next, I went inside to my office to decide where the cable would come out from the wall. The desk was moved out and a location was determined. I decided to put it close to the corner and at the same height from the floor as the outlet. A stud finder was used to find the span between two studs where I can install a wall plate. I would need to find the span at the top of the wall as well. This is important for the process of finding the top plate in the wall. Using a finishing nail and vice grips, I created a very small hole in the ceiling near the wall, halfway between the wall studs. By running a straightened coat hanger or a segment of baling wire up through the hole, I can locate the top plate to this wall and know where to drill the hole. I returned to the attic, 
and found the wire conveniently located at the edge of the attic floor. Clearing away the insulation, I found the location of the top plate. In this situation, there was a rafter running parallel with it. Just for comparison, this is what it would look like with the rafters running perpendicular to the top plate. I'm using a 1 inch spade bit to drill the hole. Since I'm dealing with a rafter that's taking up space on the top plate, I needed to drill close to it in order to get in the wall and not come out the ceiling. It's important to judge the distance of the wire in scenarios like this. Keep in mind the width of a 2x4 and judge accordingly. Once the hole was drilled, I removed the wire. Next, I tied a large nut to the end of some twine. Then I lowered it through the hole down the wall to the bottom. This would be my pull line for the office wall. Now back to the office. The hole in the ceiling will be patched later with a small dab of spackle. For now, it serves as a marker for the middle of the span where the wall plate will be located below. Here's the wall plate that I will install. The plate itself is held into the housing with two screws. I used a flathead screwdriver to remove the screws in order to free up the housing. Then I placed the housing face down in the location it would be mounted. After leveling the housing, I traced its perimeter with a pencil, using it as my pattern for the hole that will be cut out in the wall. I used a utility knife for cutting. Its short blade lowers the risk of hitting any wires or obstructions that are unseen. I can also manage the depth a lot easier with this method. Once the hole was cleared, I used a wire with a magnet tied to the end and fished out the pull line nut from the wall. Now that I have both pull lines in place, the Starlink cable can be prepared for pulling. At this point, it was important to know which end will be fished through the house. The router end is too large and will not fit through a 1 inch hole. The Starlink end can fit through a 1 inch hole. Therefore, the Starlink end will be fed through the office wall first. I began by removing the nut from the pole line and tying the line to the cable end in this manner. When tying on, I used electrical tape for extra hold and security. It is proper to tape beyond the connection and create a tapered front to lower the risk of getting hung up. This end was then sent into the wall. My wife stayed in the office and helped feed the cable while I pulled from the attic. She also let me know when to stop so we would have about six feet left in the office. Next, I routed the cable to the exterior pole line. I cut the interior line off, but left a little in order to tie on the exterior line. This was also taped with electrical tape. Now that the cable was ready to pull and the root looked open, I could cut the larger hole in the soffit. My idea was to place a PVC fitting in the soffit to protect the cable from sharp edges and to make it look better. I found that a reducer bushing worked well. This would act as a pattern for the hole and the threads would also help secure it in place. I placed a reducer against the soffit near the first hole and traced around it. My method for making the larger hole was to drill a series of small holes around the perimeter of my trace. I nipped off each segment using needle nose pliers. It left a jagged edge, however the reducer would later thread onto it and cover it up. I then dropped the pull line out of the large hole and started pulling the cable from the attic. Next, I slid the reducer onto the cable and installed it in the soffit. Now that I had the cable pulled, I needed to construct the conduit system and figured its orientation. Once again, I used one inch conduit and bought some various fittings that suited my scenario. Before pulling more cable, I planned out how the conduit would fit together and where it would end. Then I fed the cable through the pieces making sure to leave enough out at the end for connecting to the Starlink. 
Once satisfied with the setup, I moved the pieces to the side and dug a trench. Since it was a flower bed, the digging was easy. The trench ended up being about four to six inches deep. Next, I used primer and cement to glue the pieces together. As I went along, I laid the conduit in the trench. Next, I removed the tape from the end of the cable and brought it through the Starlink base in this manner. Then I took the Starlink and inserted the plug, making sure it was completely mated in place. Next, I inserted the Starlink post into the keyed position within the base. The post will snap into place. It can be released by pushing the button on the back of the post. After a final inspection of the layout, I returned the soil to the trench, covering the conduit. Next, I needed to weatherproof the exposed ends of the conduit. On the female end, I made a plug from a slotted piece of pipe and a cap. This allows the cable to run out the side instead of the top. This will lower the risk of water getting in and will be a lot easier to seal with PVC cement and caulking. On the male end, I simply cut a slot and an end cap. This side is fairly protected from the eaves, but is also easy to seal using cement and outdoor caulking. I also caulked the bushing in the soffit. Then I hid the cable behind the downspout and secured it to the brackets using zip ties. Next, I returned to the office. I installed the wall plate housing by sliding it over the cable and inserting it into the wall in this manner. Then, using a Phillips head screwdriver, it was secured to the drywall with four screws. The plate was installed in the same fashion over the cable. It was secured with the two flathead screws. And finally, I installed the router. On the bottom of the router are two connecting ports. I plugged the Starlink cable into the one on the left and the power cable into the one on the right. The router was then plugged into the wall outlet and a small LED light came on indicating power. At this point, the Starlink will articulate into sky search mode, searching for a connection. This could take up to 15 minutes. During this time, I set up my network through the Starlink app. I simply followed the instructions. It was very simple. This concludes my Starlink setup. I hope you will find this video helpful for your installation.